I just got back from men's retreat. I'm a little bit tired, but I'm a little wired up because I had this Revolution coffee, so I'm a little jazzed up at the moment. But I think I will go to bed early tonight. The guys, just they just wear me out because I just love hanging out with them, to be honest with you. I mean, we've had many men's retreats. This men, men's retreat was, I don't know, I think it was a monumental time for us in our church. It was a good, good time. God doing some amazing things that uh, are pretty powerful, and I'll let your you know, your men's tell you their side of the story, but uh, a lot of prophecy and a lot of ministry and prayer and worship, so it was a really good time, and there was some good preaching going on as well, and so it was good. It was very good, but I'm happy to be here with you, and, and I am kind of happy that the men get to stay. You know, it makes the church look a little smaller, but I think you guys can make up for it, right? I think you guys can make a little bit of shout if you had to, I think so, right? That's right. Now, we have a video we're going to show you this morning, right? Do we have that still? Okay, just if you want to cue it, we're not going to play it just yet, but we are going to play a video here in a minute. But ladies, you have an exciting thing coming up here, a ladies retreat that is actually going to be here at the church, okay? Instead of going somewhere, it's going to be here. Um, Some interesting dynamics came about, and it worked out to just do it here. And you have some outstanding guest speakers that are going to be here, okay? You've got Pastor Monica, so you already know that that's, you know, that's an A-plus right there. You already know. She's downstairs with the children right now. So if your children come out prophesying or wanting to evangelize in your house as soon as they get home, they start grabbing their dolls and start preaching to them. It's, it's my wife's fault. So um, Now, Jen Jacobson is going to be a guest speaker. If you don't know who she is, she owns, uh, she owns Beloved Cheesecake in uh, Silverton. And she was interviewed on Fox News and Kirk Cameron because of her stand for the truth and standing for uh, freedom in our country. And as a result of that, many people have come to know more about the Lord because of her story, but also other people have gotten the courage to stand up as well. And um, she has sold so many cheesecakes. I don't think she's ever thought she'd sell that many cheesecakes in her life, okay, because she went viral. So she's going to be here. She's actually a, um, a good friend of a few people here in the church, a close friend and a sister to Jana. So um, that's really cool, our connection there. And then Wendy Palau, if you know Luis Palau, if you know who he is, uh, his son Andrew has taken over the ministry of um, Luis Palau Ministries. And um, since Monica and I are involved in evangelism with the team, we have a little bit of a relationship with Wendy. And Monica asked Wendy Palau if she'd come speak, and she said yes. And so she's going to be preaching here and she is amazing, too. She's awesome. So you guys are going to have a great time. And, um, you know, that's pretty stacked. That's a stacked team, you know, if I was to say so myself. As the ushers prepare to receive our tithe and offering this morning, thank you for your giving. I want to let you know that the youth ministry is kicking off October the 20th. October 20th. We're going to kick it off. We've got a team of leaders ready to go. And one of the things we're going to do right away is we're going to do something called a trunk or treat. Trunk or treat, okay? Now, let me explain to you because um, I, I, don't want, I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, but I'm somebody that doesn't like to celebrate Halloween, like at all. But here's what I'm going to do on Halloween, because we're going to do this on Halloween, is we're going to use what the enemy wants to do for his glory, and we're going to use it to reach out to the community and uh, hopefully get some folks coming to church and lead some folks to Jesus. So we're going to do a trunk or treat where we're going to take a trunk. You know, you take your car, your car trunk, which means some of y'all need to clean it because it's, you you know, ain't nobody trying to see all that right now. If you got some junk in your trunk, you better clean that out. Okay. So what we're going to do is decorate it with like fall themed stuff, or maybe you want to do like Bible characters or superheroes or whatever you want to do. And so as a youth group, we're doing this and we're inviting you to come and join us. Okay. Bring your car your truck, your van, decorate your trunk, put a basket of candy there. And as kids come through to receive some candy, what we're going to do is we're going to invite them to come to church. We're going to let them know that we're here and that we have children's ministry on Sunday and we have youth group for teenagers on Wednesday night. And um, we are going to uh, take advantage of the opportunity to let the neighborhood know that we're a church that doesn't want to be like secluded to ourself, but we want to reach this neighborhood for Jesus. Amen? Amen. I think you can do a better amen than that. Come on now. I know Butch isn't here to make all the noise, so Craig, you're going to have to make up for it today, okay? 
All right. Now, so that's going to be on Halloween, which is a Sunday this year. So dare the devil try to take Halloween and put it on a Sunday, right? But that's what it ended up being. And um, we're going to do it that night right out here. So we're going to use the school parking lot in our parking lot and um, reach some kids for the Lord, okay? Um, Kenneth Holder is going to be here, if you remember him. Um, he has a uh, deliverance uh, ministry, spiritual warfare ministry, and he's going to be here at our church on a Wednesday night, the 29th. Everyone's invited. We want you to come. It's going to be a good time. If you need to be delivered, come. If you want to learn about freedom and deliverance, come. If you know somebody that needs to be delivered, bring them with you to come. Some of us, if we're honest, there's some more that we could grow in in that area. So come, okay? So don't think to yourself, only people who are messed up are going to come to that. Well, the truth is we're all messed up without Jesus, so, okay? But if you, if you need to be set free from some things in your life, whether it's mental, physical, spiritual, whatever's going on, emotional, come, and I believe that you'll be blessed, okay? Um, ushers, go ahead and um, receive the uh, tithes and offering. God bless you guys as you give. RevolutionChurchPDX.com is where you can give online. You can do that now if you want to or if you want to do that later, whatever you want to do. Um, if you're paying for your women's retreat or men's retreat, make sure that you put that on the memo somewhere on the envelope or check that it's women's retreat or men's retreat, okay? Now, um, okay, they said give it to Karen. So either way. So you guys know there's food today, right? So I, I hope you're a little bit hungry. Maybe you'll get a little hungrier in the next few minutes, but there's food today. We're ready to serve that to you. Brother Fred's been cooking, and you know how he does. He, he can't do nothing small, so he's, he's cooking it up right now, all right? So hopefully you can hang out with us for a few after church and enjoy some good food. So I'm going to be in part three of this message talking about capacity. And I want to um, touch on something really quick because I believe that it's, the, uh, it's a necessary foundation to grab a hold of in order to see and receive the truth in messages like this, okay? So this message and others like this. So here, here goes. I want to tell you that I'm about to make a bold statement here because I'm not sure where everybody comes from, but let me put it to you this way. You cannot have a full understanding of the truth of God's word or the gospel of Jesus Christ without first receiving God's love in your life, okay? And, and this is really important to understand because some of us have this kind of relationship with God where we are nervous about getting fired every day, okay? Do you understand what I mean? And when you're nervous about getting fired at a job, you will, you will do things like make sure that you're on time, right? You're, you're like, man, we, man I, I don't want to get written up. I can't lose this job. The benefits, right? The benefits for serving God are pretty huge, right? So you're worried about losing your benefits package. Uh, you don't want to get written up, you know? The only writing you want is your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life, you know? So you, are, you live this life as a Christian nervous that you're going to get fired, for not doing a good job at fulfilling all of the duties and responsibilities that are required for being a Christian, okay? But I want to tell you that that is not the way that believers are supposed to live, okay? When you look at the story, for example, I've probably preached it a thousand times, but when you look at the story about the father who had two sons, okay? I call it the prodigal father, but I think most people understand it as a prodigal son, Remember, there's two sons. There's one son who stayed home and did what he was supposed to. There was the other son that um, said, hey, I want to do my own thing. Give me my stuff, and I'm out. And he went and partied and lived crazy and, 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 and you know, did what a lot of us have done, you know, maybe still do. I don't know, right? I'm not following you around, watching you on everything that you do, right? God is. But he went and lived crazy and did all these things he wasn't supposed to do, Right? And then he eventually came home, and when he came home, uh, the father uh, wanted to celebrate and welcome him home as a son. Now, 
because of the sin in his life, the son tried to explain to the father, hey, dad, you know, I know I'm not worthy to be called your son, so I'd like to come back as a servant. See what I'm saying? I'd like to come back as an employee. You see what I mean? See, some people come to God as an employee. They're not coming as a son, and that's where we have a problem. That's where we have a problem in Christianity. That's where we have a problem in the church right now. We have people who come to Jesus, and the Lord says he wants to take you as his son or his daughter, but in our mindset, we only allow God to go so far with us as an employee-boss relationship, and that's where we're getting things messed up. Okay, And as a result, there's a lot of messed up things going on even right now. So whatever you can do, if you need to rewind and reprogram, or if you're just now really discipling your kids or reaching out to some folks close to you, let me tell you the first and most important thing that you've got to start with is everyone needs to understand, have a healthy and real and true understanding of the love of God and that love that he has for you. Okay, Not just for the whole world, but for you personally. Because if you can understand and grab a hold of that for yourself, then you are able to have the right framework, the right foundation, the right basis for understanding everything else that the Bible has to teach and and lead us in order to live right. Without that proper foundation, things are skewed really bad, okay? So there was the son that stayed home. He was upset because he did everything right. Remember that? Right, So the uh, son that wandered represents everybody else in the world, and the son that stayed home represented the people of Israel and therefore the Pharisees and the Sadducees, right? who said, hey, we, we followed everything that we're supposed to. And you see, if your life as a believer is only about that, you're, you're, you're not getting it. You're missing it. Right, And the Bible says something like this. There's a verse that says, freely you have received, freely give. You can't, you know, someone can say, you know what, you just need to love people, Craig. But if Craig hasn't received it himself, he doesn't have it to give. Okay? Right? Well, you just, you know what you need to do? You need to just be nice and smile. You know, you just should be a friendly person or, you know, you should just, and there's all of these things where we're telling people what they should do. But a lot of people don't know how to do it because if you haven't received what you need to get it, nothing else makes sense and nothing else is able to be doable for you in the right fashion, right? Because the only way, if you don't have God's love in you and you and fully understand that, then you're doing Christianity in your own strength. You're doing it in your own understanding, It doesn't become a spiritual walk. It becomes a fleshly walk where you're trying the best you can every day to do enough to make God happy with you. That's not Christianity. That's not grace. That's not truth. If I'm saying something wrong, tell me right now. If I'm saying it right, would you say amen? Amen. Because I can prove everything I'm saying with Scripture. You read the book of Romans. You read the book of Galatians. You read Ephesians. You read the Gospels, and you see that this is what we're taught in the Bible. Now, that being said, understanding that the foundation, the framework, everything is built off of receiving the love of God. What was the first scripture that you you learned in Sunday school as a Christian for those who went to Sunday school? John 3, 16. Somebody tell me what, what it says. So how did it start out? For God so... That's how it's supposed to continue. We started out right. We're supposed to continue on understanding and growing in that. Doesn't the Bible say like grow in the grace? You can't even understand grace without love. What are we told in... what, What is the most famous verse of scripture we like to read at weddings we call it the love chapter what does that say come on love is all that stuff right 
And, and, it, and it goes on to say that if you do things like speak in tongues and whatever and you don't have love, then you're just making a bunch of noise. So doesn't the Bible tell us that this is where it all really begins and starts? Amen. So try to watch yourself, right? Try to be attentive and watch yourself on how you're living your life as a Christian. And if you start saying things that are like, oh, you know what? I sound like I'm, I don't sound like a son or a daughter right now. What I sound like is an employee or a slave. I'm talking like a slave right now, or I'm talking like I'm an employee right now. And, and if you realize that, you can say, okay, Lord, help me. Help me because I want to walk in your love. What was that song say? My fear doesn't stand a chance when I'm in standing in your love. We sing about it. We read about it. We hear sermons about it. It's in our Bible. We have to grab a hold of this truth and really let it be the basis for why we exist as Christians. Amen? Amen. So all of that being said, let me preach part three on capacity. This, that, that was, that's like the intro for everything, okay? Because honestly, all of these things we talk about, if I preach or someone else preaches, if we're not coming from that place, we're going to keep hitting a ceiling, okay? We're going to keep hitting a ceiling all the time in, in what we're receiving. Preaching and, and truth and worship, all that could be really great, but if we're not receiving, we're, we're hitting a ceiling, so whatever stops you from being able to receive what God has for you, ask God what that is, and he'll show you, right? Sometimes it's a lack of truth. Sometimes it's pride. Sometimes it's offense. Sometimes it's bitterness. Sometimes it's who I am, right? And who I am needs to be changed to be more like him. Amen? So what I'm going to talk to you about today is uh, capacity part three. And before I do, I want to share this video with you because I thought it was pretty awesome. So let's watch that and then, then I'll come back and preach and then we'll eat some food. All right. Welcome everyone. Every time you walk through these doors, you're taking steps to find yourself. Remember, this is a safe place. There's no judgment. You are accepted right where you're at and wherever that leads to find your own peace and happiness. Feel free to express yourself to release your anxiety. I want you to be able to walk out with inner strength to finally be free. Clayton, it's great to have you back. I know you don't like to share, but why don't you start us off tonight? We want to hear what you have to say. I wake up, puddle of sweat. I have nightmares and I get back into bed. It's like these voices just keep playing on repeat in the back of my head and I can't get them to leave me alone. 30 years old, but still hates being alone when I'm home because that's when the voices get the loudest. Opening up like this is a moment far from my proudest, but these demons keep pressing me. I swear they're the foulest, but I've grown comfortable with their presence. My conscience is calloused. My dreams are their playground. My thoughts are their palace. I try to evict them. They return with more. Anxiety isn't an item you can return at the store. I was 10 the first time I had a panic attack. Like a punch to the stomach, there's no planning for that. And I didn't tell anyone because I was too scared about what they'd say. And I know deep down there was nothing they could do to take it away. It was my fight to fight and my battle to face. I remember that house I grew up in and how those demons would rattle that place. I'd lay awake at night just staring at the ceiling. I've spent my whole life trying to run from that feeling, that feeling of being lonely, that feeling of being lost, that feeling of being sick when the lights turn off, that feeling of being depressed, that feeling of being anxious, that feeling of screaming to God, begging him to take this, only to get silence in return. I'd lay in that bed crying and I tossed and I turned and I turned and I tossed to this day. The doctors gave me medication, the pastor said pray. I tried both and this anxiety still hasn't gone away. So forgive me if I fantasize about being gone today. I'm an actor who got really good at being on today. But when I turn off, I go right back into the shadows. I'm in the deep end now, but I started in the shallows and I might just drown myself in these waves. Suburban hell, these homes are all graves. Everyone's coping with something but won't admit it. They're all too afraid and these 
kids are glued to watching me. What do I say? If I'm honest with them, maybe they won't think highly of me. Everything they want me to be is what I'm dying to be. But everything I really am is what I'm not trying to be. I want them to know that they're not alone in their struggles. I wake up in tears and fall back asleep in those puddles. And I don't think I'll ever get out of this valley. I'm in terrified that all along God has tallied my sins. And if he has, the number must be astronomic. My life is a joke and you keep reading just past the comic. Because everything you think that I am is far from the truth. I wish I could open up to you and just let loose. But my vocal cords get tight when the devil pulls on this noose. And then I'm back to keeping everything bottled up inside. But he's not going to keep me from pulling the throttle back this time. He's not going to keep me trapped like this. I can't get out of bed. I was never made to act like this. I'm packing up my bags and he can't stop me from running fast like this. I'm not going to be a slave to these voices of anxiety. I'm shoving the devil back for every time that he lied to me. And I'm taking a belt to these demons who whisper despair in my ear. And I'm ignoring every naysayer who stands and stares when I'm near. I'm moving forward out of this slump. I took my bruises. I took my lumps. I fell down, but I got right back up so give me a torch and let's light that up i'm setting fire to the devil and i'm dousing these demons in gasoline look at you now now you're not laughing at me now who's the one who's being tortured and punked now who's the one closing every door that i want now who's the one watching the other burn to the ground don't look away from me you better turn back around i'm not done talking to you now i'm watching your moves i'm on your back and i'm stalking you too and when you try to ruin some other kid's life i'll be stopping you too you took 30 years of my life and I can't get that back. You told me to end my life and I nearly got killed for that. You took me down but I bounced right back. I was lost then and I got found like that. And everything you told me I wasn't, someone new told me I was. And everything you hated in me, someone new told me he loves. And when you tried to kill me with depression and anxiety, he reached in and placed hope deep inside of me. So I'm done listening to you and letting you control me. I'm announcing it now that the devil can't hold me. I'm walking away from the old me and I'm demanding a refund on every lie that you sold me. You knew I'd find a way out sooner or later, and I found my escape in the form of a savior. Clayton. 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 We're here to help. Are you sure you don't want to share? I'm good. Thank you. I wanted to share that video with you because um, I want everyone to understand and to know that at Revolution Church, we're not going to pass over and overlook issues like anxiety and fear and depression and suicide, okay? We're not going to put our, um, we aren't gonna put a Christian act on and act like folks don't deal with this stuff, okay? What I want you to understand is we're gonna do the best we can to fight it in uh, many different ways with prayer and encouragement and home groups and um, support you if you need to go to the doctor, if you need to get any kind of medication, things like that. But we believe in the supernatural healing power of Jesus. And there are a lot of people struggling with anxiety right now, young and old, and some people who haven't even able to put a definition to what they're dealing with. There are people having this bout and this struggle, like he was saying, to even get out of bed the next day and go to work has been a struggle, and they don't know why. They don't know where it comes from. And I believe that what it is is the enemy is just trying to stop people from progressing in any way, shape, or form. And everything that I read in the Bible says that we have hope through Jesus. He tells us to go. He tells us to step out in faith, walk in faith. And so what I want to do is make sure we are sensitive to the fact that people need Jesus and that people are struggling and wrestling with things like fear and anxiety and that we don't want to just say, oh, you just need to do this or you just need to do that. But what we need to do is we need to encourage people not just with words, but we actually need to start imparting our life to people. You understand what I'm saying? We actually need to be willing to walk with people, sit with people. 
to really do the Christian thing with people. Not just say, here you go, try that. But walk with folks. You can't just say, oh, you should just pray about it. You might need to pray with them and show them how to pray. You see what I mean? Because this stuff, it might seem like it's huge and it's overtaking the world, but it, it ain't got nothing on Jesus. It's got nothing on Jesus. And there's only one reason why the enemy would want to see so many people commit suicide, because all of this stuff leads to that. And there's only one reason why. is because your life really matters, and people's lives do matter, and God has put a purpose inside of everyone's life for the kingdom of God, and the enemy wants to try to stop the kingdom from advancing. Now, you have inside of you, and I have inside of me, what is needed to be able to overcome. And I, I believe that as we grow in that and as we let God keep speaking to us and we grow in his love, we'll become more in touch with that. We'll become strong in that and we'll use that and we'll see how God will do his kingdom work through all of us in many different ways, shapes, and forms. You are where you are at right now because God placed you there as a part of his strategy. Did you know that? You're where you are right now. Because God wants to use you to change somebody. So in this message series about capacity, the reason why we've been going there is because we will hear things and we will learn things and we will say, uh-uh, that's not me. I'm going to challenge you today. Because what we would like to do, what some of us, okay, what some of us like to do is we have decided what kind of vessel we are. We have said, this is the shape of my vessel, and it's not going to change. And so I like to use the example of a jar, a mason jar, a glass mason jar. You know the kind that you would can peaches in, or if you're a fisherman, you would put eggs in and, and cure for fishing, right? It's, it's a big glass mason jar. Now, that mason jar is not going to change its shape, okay? That that shape, what that jar is, that vessel is what we would call absolute. Everybody say absolute. And, and it's called absolute because that is absolutely what it will be. Okay? The only way that it would change its shape is if it got broken. That's the only way it's going to change its shape is if it gets broken. Now, there's another kind of vessel and this kind of vessel would actually stretch. And uh, this vessel is called a Boda bag, right? Which is like a leather bag that's used for carrying uh, fluid or wine. And it will actually expand, okay? So I guess you get to choose what vessel you are or what vessel you would like to be after today's sermon, Okay? Now, there's a quote that I saw, and it, and it goes like this. Life might not be the party we hoped for, but while we're here, we should dance. Life might not be the party we hoped for, but while we're here, we should dance. Now, I'm, I'm not a great dancer, but the point of that quote is to say, yes, there are things in life that are difficult. There are things in life that are not ideal for us. But since we are alive and we're in this life, we might as well make the best of it. And I think that making the best of the life that God has for you here on earth is to do what he called you to do until he takes you home. As the Bible teaches us, right, you cannot put new wine into an old wineskin. Right? The new wine, what, what does it do? It, it, it ferments in the bag, it causes it to expand, and eventually it could burst. But it is flexible. But when max capacity is exceeded, it will burst. The absolute thing will hold no more than it is designed to hold. Correct? The flexible thing, it'll expand and be stretched in order to hold more. Being flexible in your faith does not mean being unstable in your faith. In fact, faith is not faith until it is tested. And your faith grows as it's tested. This means you have to be willing to enter things that stretch your faith. 
can I say that part again? It means you have to be willing to enter or agree to things that will stretch your faith. What I'm talking about here is we are committed, at, naturally we are committed, especially as, as American Christians, we are naturally committed to normal. We strive for normal. What we call normal. What is our normal? We, as a matter of fact, many of us, we are more married to normal than we are what the Lord has to say. We are committed to normal because normal for us is safe. Normal for us is what we're used to. Normal for us is there's not conflict there. Normal is I don't have to come out of a comfort zone. Normal, it's like I'm used to this. I'm familiar with it. And you got to be careful with familiar because the Bible talks about familiar spirits. And they're called familiar spirits for a reason because they are familiar. Right? And so we like normal. And we like to take whatever God would have us do and whatever God would speak to us or wherever he would lead us. We, we like to do that as long as it is in the realm of what is normal for me. Do not make me do anything that makes me look unnormal. I'm not having that, right? Come on, this is where some of us are at. Don't make me weird, okay? Don't make me do anything that's outside of me because I don't like being uncomfortable. But I want to tell you that you have to be willing to be stretched. You have to be willing to come out of what is your quote-unquote safe zone, your normal zone, if you want to be able to grow. If you want to grow in knowledge, wisdom, if you want to grow in spirituality, if you want to grow in your anointing, if you want to grow in power, what would happen to the disciples if they went into the upper room and they waited and got filled with the Holy Ghost and then that's all they did? What would you say to that? Not much because we wouldn't even have a Bible to read. Not much, right? But how many Christians are living like that right now today? Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Even let me speak in tongues, but don't ask me to do anything. What kind of Christianity is that? I got to stay normal. Don't make, don't make me step out of normal. I got Keep me in my normal zone. Let me do my little Christian thing. Let me go to church, pay my tithe, show up every now and then. Let me do my thing. Don't bother me. Don't, don't have me doing all this stuff. Let other people do that. Let the people who are paid to do that do that. Right? Well, Alpha, you preach like that because you're paid to. Well, pay me some more then. Because I never did this for the money. Even me as a pastor, I can't, I can't live in normal. I can't do it. The only way that I can do that is if I, was be, if I was to be willing to lie to myself and lie to you and be disobedient to God and tell him, no, I'm going to do it the way that I feel comfortable doing it. I'm not going to talk to God like that, not deliberately at least. My goodness, help me one time. James chapter 1 Verse 2, dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow, so let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Have we not read this verse of scripture in church before? Have you heard this before? Good. Verse 5, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. What? That's a nugget right there. Well, I pray and I ask God and I ask God. Well, who else are you asking? Because if you ask God and then you're asking this and you're asking that and you're asking this and asking that, Whatever you pray to God, don't expect any of that to happen. Why? Because the Bible says so. Watch this. But when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver, 
For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world, and they are unstable in everything they do. Normal will get you unstable. See, we think that normal is stable. It's not. Comfort is such a huge value to all of us. We all enjoy being comfortable. Amen. Yes, we do. We like it. I think that's okay. I mean, do you want to sit in a splintered up chair? You prefer the cushion one. I would, right? My tush prefers the cush, okay? (laughs) And comfortable by itself is not evil. But comfortable can be bad if it becomes a long-lasting distraction from the purpose of God in your life. Brothers and sisters, the kind of capacity that we are supposed to have is a stretching capacity. We cannot tell God that we will remain absolute, meaning you can't form me, you can't shape me, you can't stretch me. We're not allowed to tell God that. We are supposed to allow God to mold us and shape us. He is the potter and we are the... Yes. You know, in my experience, when you ask God for a miracle, it just doesn't seem to happen in a normal zone. You know, miracles are way outside of normal, (laughs) right? Do you agree? Oh, God, we need a miracle. God, we're praying for you to heal this person in the hospital. Or, God, we need this breakthrough at this job. Or we're praying for this marriage, right? God, we need... Guess what? When the miracle happens, that is, there's nothing normal about that miracle. If there could be a formula to it and you could produce it, then there would be no need for a miracle. Normal does not provide that for you. Today I'm asking you to make a decision to go past your known capacity. Because that's where we like to stay. Like, this is me. This is, where I, this is my known capacity. I'm asking you to go outside of your known capacity today. I'm asking you to go outside of your known capacity for the rest of your life. To really trust Jesus. And let him stretch you. You see, uh, God calls you to something. You go, oh, that definitely can't be God. That's not even me. That's not even me, man. (laughs) I'm not a preacher. What are you talking about? I'm not doing that. I'm good. I'm good back here doing this. I'm good with this. Don't ask me to do that. That's not me. It's not my gift. I don't care to do that. Well, if you're married to normal, then that's exactly where you'll stay. But what if God is saying, I want to stretch you. I got more for you. That happens outside of normal. You might be good at what you do right now. But what if the anointing he gave you is actually in something else that is outside of normal? See, there's things you can be good at. But then there's things that you're anointed at as well. You want to live in anointing? Or do you want to live in what's good and comfortable for you? Matthew chapter 14, verse 22 says, As soon as the people were fed, Jesus told his disciples to get into their boat and go to the other side of the lake. Uh, While he stayed behind to dismiss the people, and after the crowds dispersed, Jesus went up into the hills to pray. And as night fell, he was there praying alone. But the disciples who were now in the middle of the lake ran into troubles. For their boat was tossed about by the high winds and heavy seas. And about four o'clock in the morning, Jesus came to them walking on the waves. And when the disciples saw him walking on top of the water, they were terrified and they screamed, a ghost. And then Jesus said, be brave. 
and don't be afraid because I am here. And Peter shouted, Lord, if it's really you, then have me join you on the water. Come and join me, Jesus replied. So Peter stepped out onto the water and began to walk toward Jesus. But when he realized how high the waves were, he became frightened and started to sink. Save me, Lord. And he cried out. And Jesus immediately stretched out his hand and lifted him up and said, what little faith you have. Why would you let doubt win? And the very moment they both uh, stepped into the boat, the raging wind ceased. Then all the disciples bowed down before him and worshiped Jesus. And they said in adoration, you are truly the son of God. You have to step out in order to step into a miracle. Peter was afraid when he stepped out. And guess what? When you step out, when I step out, we're going to be afraid. But that's how you overcome fear. Not by saying, God, take away this fear. You overcome fear by looking fear in the face and saying, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to listen to the voice that calls out to me. I'm going to listen to the one who called me. And that's how you defeat fear. Can I tell you something? Fear will never go away from you. Fear will never leave you. You understand? It will be a part of your life until Jesus takes you home. But did you know that God put inside of us a strength and a power to overcome fear every day? God is not going to eliminate something from us that he has given us the power to overcome. Fear is a product of what happened at the garden. All of the sin that we see going on in our world today is a product of what happened in the garden when Adam and Eve fell. You and I have the power to overcome fear. You overcome fear by not doing what fear tells you to do. You do what God tells you to do. And the more that you do that, the voice of fear becomes small in your life. Your trust in God becomes big. Your faith becomes big, the fear becomes small, the doubt becomes small, the anxiety becomes small. It's still there, you still battle it, but you don't listen to it. Did you ever have to deal with any bullies growing up as a kid? Did anybody have any bullies? Even if you didn't personally deal with them, but you knew they were in your class or in your school, you guys know what I'm talking about? Maybe you even got one at, at your workplace right now, I don't know. But, you know, you hear those stories of eventually everybody's done with elementary school. You become adults. And sometimes that bully becomes like a little puny dude down the corner. And now, now you're the big, strong one. You see, eventually, the things that try to rule you and the things that try to bully you, if you, if you stand with Jesus, if you follow his voice, if you do what he says, if you grab a hold of his love, if you grow in the grace, those things become small in your life. Sometimes it'd be like, oh, God, would you take this away from me? And God would be like, man, don't worry about that thing. Man, I gave you everything you need to beat that thing up. Just go ahead. Just take it out. Get rid of it. Beat it up. That's small in your life. Let's focus on this. God, this thing just won't leave me alone. Don't worry about that thing. One of the things that was really weird that I noticed, I don't know why I noticed it so much, but me and a lot of guys notice how these flies would not leave us alone at the men's retreat. I mean, we're sitting there, and the flies were, like, adamant. They, like, had to get all over you. Just It's like, what is going on, right? And I think that's a great example of exactly what the enemy does. He's, his little demons are like these little flies that just bug the heck out of you when you're just trying to have conversation, or you're just trying to eat, or you're just trying to worship God, you know, in, in, in the chapel. It's just, they're just bugging you. Be careful that you don't allow something to be bigger than it really is in your life. Don't give it glory. Oh, man, I'm just under attack by this demon that's just making me so scared. You know, that demon is not powerful compared to Jesus, and he put inside of you what you need to overcome that. If you need some help, you need some prayer, you need some people to come to your house and pray with you, do that. But listen, you, you've got, you're actually bigger than that thing. It's like a fly in your life distracting you. 
I'm saying that from experience. I'm saying that from a place of seeing the power of God overcome evil demons. That's, God, it's, with God, it's like this. It really is. If you know your word and the enemy starts manifesting himself and you use the word, man, the enemy don't like that one bit. Tail between the legs and out. Pretty soon you're not worried about those things no more. And see, the Lord wants us to hear his voice and follow him. Be obedient to what he says to do. Right? Following Jesus is life. And what does the enemy do? He wants to distract us. Lord, why are you making me uncomfortable? Because the Lord wants to expand your capacity. Why would God want to expand your capacity? Because he has created you for more. You've been comfortable in the limit that you have set, but we serve a limitless God. And if he has called you to do great things that are beyond yourself, that is what God has called you to do. And if he's done that, he will grow you. He will lead you into every step of the way. You just have to follow him and not allow yourself to be distracted by little flies. Don't be distracted by normal. Don't be distracted by what appears to be comfortable. That is a trap that was set there to stunt your growth, to keep you from advancing the kingdom of God, to keep you from your divine purpose. The boat, it represents the valued place of security and comfort. Can I tell you that everything is a false sense of security if it's outside of the will of God? In the will of God is where we are secure. In the palm of his hand is where we're safe. It's not a certain place that we design for ourselves. It's not a utopian environment that we get to rest in until we actually go to heaven. That's, that is not how it goes. The best place to be is in the will of God, right in the middle of his hand. And there could be all kinds of hell going on around you. And guess what? You're going to be okay because you're in the Father's hand. That's the best place to be. That's the safe place to be. Everything else is a false sense of security. And it's tough. And messages like this can be tough to hear because some of us, we have spent so many years of our life working hard to develop normal for us and our family. We spend years of our life developing it because we think that that's what we are supposed to do. That's what we were put on this earth to do. But actually, we all have a kingdom purpose that goes way beyond the normal. I'm almost finished. You guys with me? You okay? The journey is always more important than the destination. The journey is more important than the destination. It's in the journey that God teaches us all of the things that we need to learn in order to expand our capacity, in order to receive what he has for us. It's in that journey. And sometimes that journey gets tiring. It gets discouraging. But you know what? Keep, keep walking that journey. Keep going. Keep moving. You might not move as fast as other people move. That's okay. You're not supposed to be like them. You're supposed to be you. And you know what? Just because somebody's moving fast don't mean they're always getting further than you. Do you know that? I'm serious. There's a lot of people who they look like they're moving real quick. They look like they really got it. But come to find out when the truth hits and the rubber meets the pavement, you're further than they are. Why? Because you've been listening to God. You haven't allowed yourself to get distracted to chase this like, you know, doing zigzags on the straight path. That's a, that's a hard thing to work so hard and not go anywhere. Little steps lead to the big steps. It is a lie of the enemy to make you think that what you do for God is insignificant. Sometimes we think, man, we've got to be here, we've got to be there, we've got to be doing this thing for it to be a significant work of the kingdom. But the little things, being faithful in the little things are way more important. Being faithful in the little things is what leads you to the big things that God's calling you to do. Matter of fact, if God told you to do it, there is no such thing as a little thing. If God has called you to it, if God wants you to be faithful to it, it's not a little thing. You might think so, but then you hear testimonies 
of people's lives later of how other lives got impacted that would have never gotten impacted if you weren't doing what you were supposed to be doing. You know, Billy Graham would have never became Billy Graham if it wasn't for the faithfulness of other people in his life that were doing little things. The little steps lead to the big steps. Don't get focused on the big stuff. You got to be faithful at the little things. When I was a youth pastor, you know, we would, me and other youth leaders and other youth pastors, we would talk about these things that hundreds of kids would come to. Yeah, we're going to do this conference. We're going to do this outreach. We're going to do this thing. And hundreds of kids around Portland are going to come to this thing. And, and, and you know what? The focus is never supposed to be on the big events. The focus was supposed to be on the lives that God gave us every week. To be focused on them. And, and, and we did do big events. We did do big outreaches. We did do that stuff. But you know, where God expected us to be faithful was in the lives he put in front of us every week. In the little things. There are teenagers that I had back then that are full-grown adults right now. And some of them are leading ministries and planting churches and doing all kinds of amazing things. And it was just from me, just, you know, me and my wife just being faithful at little things. And we had 10 kids in the youth group or five kids in the youth group, you know. Every youth group that Monica and I started started with, like, one. <laughs> one teenager. And then three teenagers. And then five teenagers. And then 12 teenagers. And then 25 teenagers. And then 40 teenagers. And then it was like, that's enough. We don't have the capacity for any more. We don't have the leaders. We don't have the energy. That's it. You know, but God brought who he wanted to bring. There's a verse in the Bible. It's a uh, verse nine of uh, I just want to give you the address in Luke 16, verse nine. It says, here's a lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then when your possessions are gone, they will welcome you to an eternal home. If you are faithful in little things, you will be faithful in large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. That's what the Bible says in the Passion Translation. Yes. As Luke 16, starting at verse 9. You don't grow if you don't go. What boat is God calling you to step out of? And that's where I close the message today. You don't grow until you go. You got to step outside of that boat. You got to let your capacity be stretched to be expanded. I, I would encourage you, don't tell God that you're going to stay that jar, that absolute jar, and that this is it. This is all you get from me, God. Be willing to stretch. Be willing to let God lead you and guide you and use you in ways that are even outside of your realm of normal. Don't be married to normal. The miracle zone is not in the normal zone. It's in the uncomfortable zone. And he's still a miracle working God today. So what boat is he calling you to step out of? What is your normal that God is telling you, hey, I want you to come out of normal. I got more stuff for you. I got things I want to do in your life. What is God speaking to you? That's what you should pray about today. And I encourage you to do that, maybe even for the rest of your life. Would you stand with me and let's pray. Lord, we can't do things like this without you. It takes a lot of faith. It takes a lot of courage. It takes a lot of supernatural power. And many times in our lives where we don't feel like we got that. So we need you. We need you in order to do what you're calling us to do. We can't do it on our own. So would you help us today? And I think, you know, honestly, church, I think that's all you got to do is if you want to be obedient to what God's calling you to do, is just ask him to help you. Just say, Lord, help me be obedient to you. I need help with stretching my capacity. I'm willing to step outside of normal, but I need you to guide me every step of the way. I'm, I'm scared of it. Just confess that to the Lord and ask him for help, and he'll help you. 
He'll help you starting today. If you really mean it with all your heart, God will help you starting today, starting right now. He will start you on that journey right now if you let him. Just confess that to the Lord. I want to tell you that um, it's important that you know how much God is really in love with you, how much he really cares about you. I want you to know that the love that God has for you is unconditional, and it's really hard to understand, and it's hard to even define because you can't find that love anywhere else but only in the arms of Jesus. And I pray for you today that you would receive that love and that it would do a magnificent work inside of you and make you the man and woman of God that he's called you to be. And I want to tell you that you're no longer a slave. You're not God's employee. You are his son. You are his daughter. He has called you into sonship, not slavery. So may you be blessed. May you hear the Lord clearer today than ever. And may you not be afraid not be anxious of stepping out of normal for Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Revolution Church, God bless you, and thank you for coming to church today. It's awesome. And uh, we want to feed you, so please get some food. Otherwise, Fred's going to wonder what he's going to do with all that food. So please grab some. Even if you don't have time to eat it here, take it to go. If you uh, have a friend you want to take the food to, then take it to your friend. But please come enjoy some food um, that we have prepared for you. God bless.